Hello everyone. In this session, we will be discussing indolent skin-only diagnosis in cutaneous lymphoma. Before we get started, I would like to thank our corporate partners and individual donors. Thank you so much for making these programs possible for us. I would like to introduce the wonderful speaker for this discussion, Dr. Seema Rosati. Hi, Dr. Rosati. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Dr. Rosati is an assistant professor of dermatology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. She speciali specializes in medical dermatology, cutaneous lymphoma, and supportive oncodermatology. So I will go ahead and turn things over to you, Dr. Rosati. Thank you. Um, thanks for the introduction. So um, my name is Seema Rosati again, and I uh, run our multidisciplinary cutaneous lymphoma clinic and um, tumor board um, in collaboration with our oncologists, radiation oncologists, and dermatopathologists, resident fellows, research coordinators at um, John Hopkins Dermatology. Um, so today, you know, I'm providing you a sampler. Obviously, um, if, you had her if you have heard the name cutaneous lymphoma, you know it's a broad spectrum of conditions and um, I will cover you a sample of, um, of the different types, different subtypes and treatment options. And other experts during this two day program will go over in more detail about you know, treatment options and, um, and um, different managements. Very well. So cutaneous lymphoma, cutaneous meaning skin um, are, um, and we, here we are talking about primary cutaneous lymphomas. Um, it, our group of um, wide range of, um, of cancers um, that usually start with, uh, with lymphocytes that are reside in the skin. Um, they are the second most common, um, what we call extranodal non-Hodgkin lymphomas. So in their subtype of non-Hodgkin lymphomas. And in contrast to other systemic or nodal um, Hodgkin, non-Hodgkin lymphomas, uh, which are mostly like um, um, our B cell derived, cutaneous skin lymphomas are mostly T cell lymphomas. Um, and so as you can see, um, World Health Organization classifies um, these cutaneous lymphomas into B cells and T cells. And as you can see on the table on the right side, there's a wide range. This is, these are rare diseases with um, numerous subtypes. So um, it can be very challenging to diagnose um, patients with these diseases. I like what a National Comprehensive Cancer Network offers for physicians and patients. Um, this is a place that I send my patients to um, and also physicians, um, there's good, you know, guidelines of how to diagnose and work up to come to the diagnosis um, um, of cutaneous B cell or T cell lymphomas and also guidelines for management. There are patient resources um, for patients as far as understanding their diagnosis better and also um, patient support uh, resources. One of my favorite place, I have to say though, one of my favorite places to send my patients is to the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. Um, I try to, you know, ask them to avoid asking Dr. Google and straight go to the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation website. So now, um, you know, we talked about like their primary cutaneous B cell lymphomas and T cell lymphomas. And so I start talking a little bit about primary cutaneous B cell lymphomas. They are the, mo the second most common uh, form of primary cutaneous lymphomas and sort of account for about 30% of all primary skin lymphomas. Um, again, the, the uh, World Health Organization divides them into subtypes. There are different sort of classifications. We don't need to get into the details, um, but uh, for, the, for the purpose of this uh, talk, we're going to use the ones on the left side. So they are main categories. So, so how do we diagnose? Before I get to the subtypes, how do we diagnose um, our patients with B cell lymphoma? First of all, is that you know you have a skin lesion and you go see your doctors um, a lot of times, then you get referred to a, to a, an expert um, in cutaneous lymphoma. Um, 
History and physical exam are crucial. Getting a detailed history of how many lesions have come, how long have they been staying, what are the associated symptoms like itching or ulceration. Um, and then, you know, skin biopsy is key. A lot of times, because these are rare diseases and have a wide differential diagnosis um, and also overlapping characteristics, sometimes um, multiple skin biopsies from different um, body sites, if there is uh, if there are multiple lesions uh, or skin growths, can be very helpful to recognize the pattern um, under the microscope. Um, and so that is crucial. And as you can see here on the left lower uh, um, hand side of this um, of this page, um, we do a lot of a lot of times we have to do multiple stainings to sort of categorize these lymphomas into the right category, um, which can then uh, certainly affect management. Now, also we want to do systemic workup to make sure that the, these are skin lymphomas or if they are beyond the skin, we understand um, how extensive they are. So we check your blood, um, we check a CBC where it looks at the white blood cells, the red blood cells and platelets and give us some um, good information of what's going on. We check um, you know, your liver and kidney function, which is representative of like the major visceral organs, um, and um, check inflammatory markers, as well as imaging study. Um, so for staging, we do um, um, CT chest, abdomen, pelvis, CT scan, or a PET scan, where we can take a look at your lymph nodes um, and uh, also take a look at to see if there's any other organ involvement. And once we put all this information, so the, the clinical um, information, the histopathology information, so what we see under the microscope with the other workup that we've done, then we try to categorize this. And this works out both for B cell and T cell um, um, lymphomas. We then put them in, in, in different categories, which guide our management. So Major subtypes of primary cutaneous lymphomas, there are also other subtypes, but we're not going to get into because these are the major ones. And again, this is sort of like a sampler uh, talk of cutaneous lymphomas, um, is follicular center lymphoma, marginal zone lymphoma, and diffuse large B cell lymphoma. I put follicle center lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma, and some of it is like the clinical characteristics, but some of most of it is like what we see under the microscope help us differentiate between them um, together because they both have an indolent course, meaning they're slow growing, very, very slow progressing. Um, they have excellent prognosis. Um, we look at usually in, in the category of cancer, we look at five year survivals and uh, for these um, type of primary um, indolent primary B cell lymphomas, um, there is uh, over 95% uh, survival rate. After, regardless if we treat them or not, they can reoccur um, on the same location that they were treated or on other body parts um, up to 50% and up to 50% of the patients, but that does not change their prognosis. They still have excellent prognosis, um, even if they reoccur. Um, dissemination to organs is rare, less than 10% of patients experience, um, um, experience it be beyond their skin for these type of lymphomas. And so our primary or first line treatment is local therapy. And I will get into uh, more details of that. Now diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type, um, especially in others is if it's not on the leg, is a little bit different. So it has, it's a little bit, the, this, the, these, this type of lymphoma has a little bit more aggressive behavior. And so um, it has a, a lower survival rate. Um, it more commonly disseminates um, on the body, on the skin, but also, um, also beyond the skin to other organs. So first line therapy uh, for this is uh, usually systemic treatments. Um, and so we'll go into also a little bit more detail. What can you clinically expect? So 
on the first um, first slide, first photo you see on the left side, um, you can see this red purple, uh, what we call sort of dome shaped papules and plaques or skin growths um, that you can see they can be solitary. So one lesion only or multiple lesion, as you can see on this patient's back and arm. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a photo of a patient with, um, primary cutaneous marginal zone lymphoma. Um, the middle photograph is a photo of, um, primary cutaneous diffuse large, diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type. You can see this more sort of like thick, um, um, pink, red, um, tumor growth on the patient's knee here. Um, and then on the left, uh, on, the, on the right side, you can see a picture of primary cutaneous follicle cell uh, center lymphoma, which a lot of times can uh, clinically look like marginal zones. So those like those red, um, um, purple, dome-shaped papules or skin growths, um, but occasionally also can be uh, like sort of like this plaque-like appearance that you see um, on the patient's chest. So what are our therapy options? Again, marginal zone lymphoma and, and follicle center lymphoma, those indolent B cell lymphomas, we first focus, especially if there's one single lesion on local therapy, what are options? One of my favorites is local radiation therapy because it's well tolerated. Um, it goes basically skin deep. Um, the side effects are minimal, although every time we introduce a treatment, there is there is side effects. Uh, and some of this can be skin irritation. If, if we're treating um, um, the area of uh, the scalp, um, at higher doses, it can cause permanent hair loss. So definitely that's something to discuss with your provider. Um, other local treatment options are interlesional steroids. So where we inject the, these growths with, um, with uh, cortisone or steroids. And then um, and excision is another, um, another treatment option. I think it really depends on, on the size, if there are there's larger surface areas of the body involved. I, I that's not something that I use. Um, I prefer radiation therapy um, or interlesional steroids. Other therapies to consider, and there is uh, there is data and research behind it, are topical steroid, topical immunotherapy, um, so, uh, such as with imiquimod, and then also nitrogen mustard. Um, as you can see, I have also observation here. Again, because these are very slow growing, very uh, slow progressing uh, type of lymphomas, if treatment is not feasible for the patient, we can just clinically monitor it um, and then change our management if it becomes symptomatic, if it becomes multiple, if the patient is uncomfortable. Um, so, if um, patients have a slow, those slow-growing uh, B-cell lymphomas, but they have multiple lesions on their body, we still can do, um, you know, we st can do, still can do radiation. We still can do interlesional steroids. Um, we still can just observe it. Again, these are very slow moving and, ob uh, and observation, clinical observation is in the NCCN guidelines, which we use in the US a lot and also in the European guidelines. Um, but also rituximab, which is a monoclonal antibody against CD20, which is expressed on the surface of these B cells, um, is, is, a, is a good appropriate treatment option. Uh, for refractory cases, then we can think about systemic multi-agent chemotherapy, um, which I will briefly discuss in the next slide. Now, as I mentioned, primary cutaneous diffuse large B cell lymphoma um, is, a, 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 especially leg type, which is a more common one, is seen uh, usually in elderly um, and um, specifically more common in women. Um, the treatment options, because, because they're a little bit more aggressive, uh, can have extra beyond the skin involvement, so extra what we call extra cutaneous involvement and involve other organs. A lot of time, our first-line therapy is rituximab 
or um, our chop, which is rituximab with multi-agent chemotherapy. Um, you can see the names of those other agents here that is given uh, together. Now, local radiation therapy still is an op option um, for, for these patients, but also enrollment in clinical trials, in non-Hodgkin lymphoma clinical trials, um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma uh, clinical trials are an option in centers that have that availability. Now we're going to switch switch basically um, 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 topics and, and now going to talk a little bit about cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. So cutaneous T-cell lymphomas are the most common type of T, um, cutaneous lymphomas. Mycosis fungoides is the most common type of T cell, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And Cesare syndrome is an aggressive leukemic variant, meaning these abnormal lymphocytes are also in the blood. Um, usually, um, so the age adjusted US incidence is like four to six um, um, patients per, per um, million person per year. That accounts about about, about three to 4,000 new uh, cutaneous T cell lymphoma cases in the US um, each year. The median age of diagnosis is around uh, like in the later 50s, uh, 57, 58. And then um, mycosis fungoides, uh, you know, comes in a, in a spectrum of stages. The early stages is usually patch plaque disease limited to the skin and late stages where you have full redness of the skin. As you can see in this gentleman, you can um, also have thick nodules, ulcerations. And as we discussed, you can have blood involvement, which if, um, if it meets the, the diagnostic criteria, it's called Cesare syndrome. Also lymph nodes can be involved and rarely other visceral organs. So when we want to diagnose a patient with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, um, there are different areas of the body that we have to look into. Um, we look at the skin as we, as we, you know, as I had mentioned before, we get a thorough history, do a thorough physical exam, um, take skin samples that we look at under the, uh, under the microscope uh, to capture the pathologic variability of the disease. Um, we look at the blood. We do, um, we look at, you know, we do a CBC, which is like just the general um, blood count but also flow cytometry, which specifically looks at markers that can recognize these abnormal cells in the blood. We feel the lymph nodes. We do imaging studies like the CT scan or the PET CT um, um, to look for the lymph nodes and the visceral organs as well. And then also a lot of times for cutaneous T cell lymphomas, we use this molecular anal analysis, which is like a signature pattern uh, that is recognized on these T cells. Um, we call it like a clonal T cell antigen receptor gene rearrangement that can helpful be, be helpful in diagnosing these conditions. So again, we talked about, we already talked about these. We talked about looking in the blood, looking in the lymph node um, with physical exam, but also um, um, with imaging studies and uh, in laboratory blood work. Now, once we know what each category, like each uh, compartment of the body um, and main compartments, again, are how much there's skin involvement, how much there's nodal involvement. So are there lymph nodes involved and how, uh, how involved are they? Is there any visceral involvement? And is the blood involved? Um, once we know uh, uh, we have all this information put together, which can sometimes take several weeks, um, we stage um, our patients um, to guide, uh, help us guide their prognosis and also treatment. Now, depending, as we said, like if it's early stage disease or late stage disease, um, there is there, there's a variability of options for treatments. For early stages, as you can see on the left-hand side uh, of this slide, left-hand side of the slide, um, we focus on what we call skin-directed therapy. So um, we, topical steroids, um, big xerotene gel, which is a vitamin A derivative, nitrogen mustard, 
um, which sounds scary, but it's not. Um, and it can be very helpful in certain type of um, for certain type of patients. And phototherapy are, are to go skin directed therapies. Um, if the patient has more generalized patches that they can, you know, manage with topical treatment, or they've, they've not responded to topical treatment, um, then we add or switch to um, um, systemic treatment. So a lot of time we start with oral medication or injections. Oral medications like bigzartine, which again comes in also in a pill form, um, and you can see it that it's that green triangle you can see there. Or methotrexate, which is not here, um, but that's also, you know, and, and the right patient can be helpful. And interferon, which is a type of um, type of immune therapy and works really well um, with um, with um, big xeratine, um or methotrexate in conjunction with them. Now for advanced stages, as you can see, we have other treatment, we have more treatment coming uh, along. They, there are multiple centers with clinical trials um, that are available for cutaneous lymphoma patients, uh, especially mycosphungoides and Cesare syndrome. We use total skin irradiation, Brentuximab, which is CD30 antibody, was recently approved. Moga Meluzumab is another um, 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 monotherapy, systemic monotherapy that is available to our, uh, to our uh, patients and was FDA approved in 2018, which um, I'm sure other experts will dive into um, in, uh, during this um, two-day event. Very well. So one thing that I, I thought was very important to talk, you know, I give you all these treatment options, you know, depending on the stage, depending on what what patients have responded before or not, but something too important that um, um, that it's good for providers to talk to their patients about is that other than allergenic um, transplant, which is only um, for a very a small populations of our patients um, qualify for that. The therapies that I just reviewed with you here are not given for curative intent. Uh, right now, we don't have a curative therapy for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, mycosis fungoides, and Cesare syndrome. And so, you know, it's good to set, set the goals of therapy. Um, so, so main goal for therapy is reduce, reduce the disease in the body and control the symptoms and also not giving the, 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 the disease a chance to grow and become more aggressive. Um, our goal of therapy is to, to, to um, personalize the treatment to our patients in a way that um, has the minimum side effect profile for them. And, um, you know, um, it, 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 while they can manage or their other comorbidities, if they have liver disease or renal disease or diabetes, and also improve and maintain um, uh, uh, their quality of life by controlling the disease well. Um, another thing, you know, goal of therapy is to control the symptoms and, and, and provide supportive care uh, to decrease risk of skin infection and, and, and manage the, the, the itching that can be that can be very devastating to, to some of our patients. Um, we know that disease will relapse even if we control it well for a lot of our patients um, after switching therapy, discontinuing therapy or on therapy. Um, but also we know that down the, down the line, um, we can recycle previous treatment option or give them in combination and still patients will, can get some benefit from it. So something else to, to remember is that in general, um, we try to avoid multi-chemotherapy for our patients because we know that this just immune suppresses our patients and Im we need a Im strong immune system to fight uh, this disease. And so if we have to go towards chemotherapy, we prefer single agent chemotherapies over combination chemotherapies such as CHOP. Now, again, CHOP is, is, uh, is um, 
beneficial and, 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 and recommended in some type of um, lymphomas, like diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, um, but also in that, not alone, what with rituximab and sometimes modified CHOP is used. Um, but in general, multi-agent chemotherapy, the, the response is short-lived, has higher toxicity um, um, for our patients, and so we try to avoid it. I think this is an important slide. This is also something that I always review with my patients when I meet them for the first time, and also as, as we go along in their ma the management of their disease. Now I'm gonna switch gears again um, from going from um, mycosis fungoides and Cesare syndrome to another type of uh, cutaneous T cell lymphoma called primary cutaneous CD30 positive lymphoproliferative disorder, which is a you know truck full of words, um, but because it's a spectrum of conditions of, of um, uh, cutaneous uh, lymphomatoid conditions, including lymphomatoid papillosis and primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So these are the second most common uh, subtypes of cutaneous T cell lymphomas. And again, they come in a spectrum. Um, clinically, they, they also the, the, um, comes in a spectrum. So you can see uh, these, like as you can see on the left side, on the knee of this patient, like these small um, um, pink, purple, um, tiny growths that come a lot of times in clusters. Um, and in, in lymphomatoid papillosis. And when they heal, a lot of times, as you can see on that inner thigh um, location, they leave an indented scar uh, with brownish discoloration. That's very typical of um, presentation for lymphomatoid papillosis. Now, primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma um, is a little bit different. There are larger growths, um, they, they grow fast and can ulcerate. Um, a lot of times they come as a solitary lesion, um, but sometimes they, they can, it can be multiple. So classic characteristics for lymphomatoid papillosis is that first of all, um, usually as you saw in those photos, they are smaller, a pap what we call papules and nodules, smaller skin uh, um, growths, a lot of times comes in clusters. Um, one classic presentation is that they spontaneously regress, meaning even without treatment, that cluster will heal on its own within weeks to months. Um, but it's a chronic course. So, you know, patients get, keep getting new crops here and there um, with different uh, time intervals. Um, they, uh, it does not change the, the, the life expectancy. So it's so benign. And that's why um, the, this term was changed to lymphoproliferative disorder from lymphoma um, because of this slow, uh, slow, growing or indolent behavior as far as like the progression of the disease goes. Um, but although LYP itself is, is very, very benign, um, it, it puts patients, at, we know that these patients are at higher risk of developing a second skin lymphoma or systemic um, lymphoid malignancies, nodal uh, lymphoid malignancies. So these are, are still, we keep a close eye on our patients. Now, primary cutaneous um, um, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, or in short, ALCL, um, a, a classic characteristic is, is either, again, comes in a solitary, as a solitary growth, like you saw in that photo, um, or in grouped nodules, um, usually rapid growing, ulcerating, um, and sometimes it can be in mul multiple uh, areas of the body. Um, Sometimes, occasionally they regress, but usually when they come, they stay until we give uh, patients treatment. Despite the scary um, 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 look of it, and also this, um, the, the, the anabla uh, anaplastic uh, name of it, it does have a very favorable prognosis and usually is responsive to treatment. So what are, what are our treatment options for this spectrum of um, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, or what we call in short CD30 positive LPD? 
Phototherapy is an option. Um, I don't think we use it that often anymore. If there is multifocal involvement, meaning it's like multiple body parts, I think low dose methotrexate is a good option. If it's single or couple, couple lesions, especially for um, ALCL, local radiation therapy is a great option. Um, and then now we have um, this um, anti-CD30 antibody called brintuximab, um, which in the clinical trials, patients had great uh, response to it. Now, other therapies that have been reported by experts are bigzartin, which is that a vitamin A derivative in a pill form, interferon, which is an injection immunotherapy, Isotretinoin, which is also a vitamin A derivative, we use it for acne treatment um, mostly, and then topical immunotherapy, such as with imicomod. Um, again, this depends all on the patient's, patient's preference, um, um, the extent of the disease, um, and feasibility of treatment. So Basically, this, you know, it summarizes, um, this talk summarizes major um, categories um, of cutaneous lymphomas and their subtypes and, um, and um, the treatment options. Um, I hope you guys had, ha you know, enjoyed this overview and I hope uh, you guys enjoy um, the, the rest of these talks. Um, that are provided um, to you in the next uh, uh, next two days. Um, I wish I was in person with you so you could ask me tons of questions. Um, but if you wanted to reach me, you can contact us at our clinic number um, and our team will, um, will help you um, uh, get in contact with me. Thank you so much for your attention. Please feel free to contact me. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosati, and that's really wonderful of you to provide your contact. So thank you. We're just we're really grateful for your time and your expertise. So thank you for sharing with us today. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, just before we go, I would like to thank our corporate partners and individual donors again for your continued support um, in making these programs possible for us. So thank you all for joining us for this session. We really hope that you found it informative. Uh, please make sure to check out the other available sessions in our two-day curriculum. And if you would like to go back and reference this particular session, it will be available on demand on our website following the event. Thank you so much.